Hey, and welcome back. We're going to look at the effect that temperature has on reaction rate. And in general, as the temperature of a reaction increases, the rate of the reaction increases. In fact, it's pretty dramatic. So for every 10 degrees C increase in temperature, most chemical reactions will double in speed. So in this lecture, we're going to try and figure out what it is that's causing the reaction speed to go up. In fact, in the earlier lectures, right, we looked at rate laws. And so a rate law is a way we can predict the rate of a reaction. And so if we've got a single reactant A, then the rate of the reaction is equal to the concentration of it to the order times by a rate constant. And presumably, as we increase the temperature, there's no real change in concentration. And uh, there is a dramatic increase in rate. And so what that is telling us is that essentially that the rate constant itself is increasing dramatically with temperature. And you might say, well, that's not the only thing here in the expression, right? It could be the concentration is changing. But remember, in terms of a molar concentration, it actually tends to decrease slightly with temperature because the volume of the solution expands. So it must all be contained in this rate constant. So we talk about a rate constant and you might say, well, if it's constant, right, it should be, you know, unchanging. But in actual fact, it is not a constant. It is a factor and a strong function of temperature. Now this was known for a long time and it turns out there were lots of theories about how to predict the rate constant and uh, a theory in 1889 kind of ran out so there was a chemist called Svante Arrhenius and he's also the same chemist who sort of came up with the early acid base theory and he said that the rate constant itself can be thought of as being a product of two things a uh, factor A which we call the pre-exponential factor for reasons that we'll about to see and this pre-exponential factor has got something to do with the number of collisions the molecules are making per second. We'll see that it also takes into account the chance that the molecules, when they collide, have the correct uh, orientation to react. And it also has an exponential factor. Let's go ahead and write that in green. So it's e to the power of... Um, an energy we call the activation energy over RT. And uh, so EA is the activation energy or the energy of activation. R is the gas constant. So again, this is not always for uh, reactions that involve gases. Uh, this can be reactions involving solids and liquids as well. But we tend to use a gas constant that has different units as the one that we're used to using in the gas law chapter. And that is 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. And the last thing here is the temperature. This is the temperature in Kelvin, though. So this is the absolute temperature. So let's look at what happens when a chemical reaction takes place. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a horizontal axis here, and this is going to represent time. And just imagine I'm taking a picture of a reaction. So initially I've got a pair of reactants, and I'm going to draw them as these yellow circles here. And they are moving towards each other. And so over time, right, they're getting closer and closer together, and then eventually they touch each other. And at this point here, when they touch each other, one of two things has to happen. Either A, they just bounce off of each other and they no longer react, or they actually hit each other so hard, they actually start to react and form something else. In fact, I'm going to draw this next symbol here um, in green. And uh, you've kind of seen the atoms are sort of starting to merge with one another. And then eventually they will break off and apart and they'll kind of bounce off of each other. And then you'll have your separated products. So at the left hand side, we essentially have reactants. And on the right hand side, we have products. And this in-between structure where the reactants are kind of swapping atoms with one another in order to form a product, we're going to call the transition state. We can go ahead and we can plot this as an energy diagram. And so as an energy diagram, we can write potential energy here or just energy and uh, versus time or reaction coordinate is a more technical term here. And we can go ahead and we can ask ourselves, what is the energy of the reaction as we go from left to right, as we go from start to finish? And initially, we've got our reactants that are separated. And as they collide with one another, we have to uh, put in energy to squeeze them together. And then what we find is that as we hit the transition state, as the atoms start to swap from one reactant to the other, then the energy goes back down again. And uh, at the end of the day, we have products. So we've got reactants on the left. We've got products in the, on the right-hand side. In the middle, we've got our transition state. We can just call it TS. And there's a minimum energy we have to provide for the reactants to collide with each other in order to form the transition state. And that's our activation energy. And we can think of it as a barrier or a barrier height in the same way that imagine you had a ball and you wanted to throw the ball um, up a mountain. So let's just say you're standing here on the reactant side and you're throwing the ball. And if you gently throw it right, it kind of goes 
and gets halfway up and maybe stops and rolls back down again. If you throw it a little bit harder, then it goes a little bit further up before it rolls down. And there's a minimum energy that you have to throw it with for which it can get to the very tippy top. And then maybe a little gust of wind will take it over to the other side. And of course, if you throw with an energy bigger than that, it actually keeps rolling up to the very top and it's still got energy at the top and it happily rolls down to the other side and forms products. So that is our idea behind a chemical reaction. So the reactants are colliding with one another and as they collide with one another, right, we have to give energy in order for them to kind of push hard into one another. And there's a minimum energy whereby they can start to swap atoms and go through the transition state. And after that, it basically is the point of no return. They just go on to form products.